I guess we can start. So hello everybody, I'm quite pleased to be here again after four years. I, I've been here for the first Drupal Camp in Vienna, and it's been a while. Um, so I'm coming from Prague, from Czech, uh, Czech Republic. It took me like about four hours to get here by train, so it's, it was quite easy travel. Uh, my name is Marek Sotak. Uh, I'm a web developer for the past 14 years. I'm a Drupal developer, themer. For the past eight years, uh, I do design, research, user experience. Some of you might know me as a root candy author back some times ago, which was like a Drupal admin, can, uh, admin theme. Uh, I'm also a co-organizer of Frontend United, which is like a, a yearly event where we gather all the frontend people around Drupal. It, it used to call uh, Drupal Design Camp, and we always do it in a different country. And uh, I'm also a founder of Inline Manual, which is kind of like a service for handling documentation, which I hope I will have some time to show you. And I'm also founder of Atomic Ant Limited, which is a company based in London, because I used to live there for about three years. So uh, just briefly, this session is about um, uh, a research that I conducted of about documentation and then some uh, user uh, research about user behavior on one example that we did in one company that I am working for, uh, which is a Swiss bank. And uh, then probably the demo and some more stuff. So uh, our problem, what we were facing, I mean, the, this first part is a little bit boring, so I hope you had your cup cupcake and you will be you now digesting it for a while. So. <coughs> The problem we had and we always faced uh, while we were the Drupal developers or just, you know, we were creating websites is uh, what are we going to do with the documentation or what are we going to handle to the client afterwards? You know, these PDF documents about how to deal with the uh, website, how to manage the content and stuff like that. And we always were doing like screenshots, screencasts and tried a lot of things and nothing was working for us. So that, that was the problem that uh, I thought we might fix at some point. And so I did this research uh, asking myself, is it just really us uh, dealing with these problems that we are not able to handle documentation well, we can't budget it or anything? And I was asking how the others do that. And I was really hoping that there is a solution for this. So I did an in interview, I called about 30 subjects, which were like Drupal companies, uh, individuals like freelancers, and other companies not working with Drupal, with WordPress or any other CMS or more complicated websites. Uh, and it was, it was all around the world. Uh, so I had this hi hypothesis, which was uh, that these inter interviews will reveal that it's really difficult to create such documentation and the end result was that uh, everyone kind of expressed the uh, need for such a tool, that it is frustrating, it is a pain of creating screenshots. Um, and actually 40% of the interviews uh, were not doing any documentation because they just, at the, at the beginning of this process, they just said, well, uh, screw it, I'm not going to do it because it's so painful that uh, I will just rely on the calls and I will wait for the client to call, call us and I will deal with it via the phone. And uh, some people also expressed that they c could have like a documentation department to handle this and you know, that they will give this work to them, but they never had a budget. Uh, I had second hypothesis to, uh, to address, which was this, um, that it will kind of validate that uh, customers use one or more custom alternatives. So it was really f looking for this another solution, uh, but none of these have any of the solution that they would be happy with. And they, they were trying things like we were, some were just, uh, you know, stopped doing this and they relied on the phone. And uh, so at the end, all of these interviews, uh, all the people, all these companies, they don't have any process implemented when it came to the uh, documentation. Uh, some were using screenshots, well, 30.8% were using screenshots. Uh, they also sometimes allow the people to, you know, comment on it within Google Docs. And anyways, they always kind of express this high pain level 
when creating these, especially when they uh, were updating it. So for example, you change a menu, menu item and you have to redo all the screenshots one by one, all the pages. Screencasts were kind of uh, used uh, happily by the clients, that clients were kind of happy to use them, uh, but it never worked for the developers. And as well, reusing them was uh, kind of painful. Uh, but some of them were using the available online uh, screencast. Uh, then workshops, some of these who were working with some, uh, you know, uh, the more, uh, or with the companies that they had money, they were creating uh, workshops for them, uh, but these are really expensive. And uh, anyways, they were at the end doing the phone call support after the workshops were done. And phone call support, that was kind of, uh, Everyone was doing that, even though they had the screenshots and uh, uh, screencasts. Uh, and <coughs> they were just relying on this because uh, you know, it was really painful to create some documentation or any documentation, so they didn't care much, even though they knew that it will cost a lot, much more than creating a good kind of knowledge base. Uh, so yeah, so, so that was the outcome that well-established companies they don't have any idea how to improve the process, and usually there is no budget for creating the documentation, mostly because it is really hard to bud budget these things, or yeah, it, it can easily go out of hand. Uh, that's just a nice pie chart, and okay. So what are the options then? Uh, you have support calls, support chat, workshops, web ticket, and knowledge base, which can consist of screencast, screenshot solutions, and as well, you can have the better u user experience. Now, the support calls are quite expensive. Uh, I'm right now working as well as a contractor for the uh, biggest Swiss bank, and uh, from there, I know quite a lot of uh, things about these like kind of call supports and, and things around that. And there is like an average call price is $12. So if you imagine you have, let's say, 1,000 tickets per, per a day, it, it costs like $12,000. Uh, now you have a support chat, which is still requires a person to answer. It, it's still expensive. It's less, less expensive th than the support calls. You have workshops, which is really expensive, and you have to spend a lot of time uh, on preparation. Uh, then you have the web ticketing, which is, so it's kind of like that the user submits a ticket through the web form and then someone like an agent will respond to that. Uh, and that costs about, well, $2, I think uh, it should be about like $8 here. And then you can have the knowledge base, which is kind of part of the self-help where people are, uh, are helping themselves. And that's the cheapest option uh, where you can have the screencasts, which as I said before, are really hard to reuse screenshots I already explained uh, some painful uh, aspects of that, and uh, you can create solutions which will be like a you know like a pages where uh, the user will find their help, or you can use the better user experience, but uh, it won't cover the workflow and processes. Let's say how to create a website. You, know, you can create really nice uh, user experience, but uh, it's really hard to describe some of the workflows. Uh, so. My kind of approach is to have better UX and uh, then following up by the self-help support. Uh, self-help support here means that uh, the users are actually helping themselves. So it could be a forum, uh, it could be, a, you know, if you have a forum where people can actually answer others' questions, they are helping themselves. Uh, or based on other solutions like uh, these documents that are either your users uh, writing or your support guys are writing. And this usually costs sort of like a, let's say one to two dollars. So you can see that the call costs twelve dollars, while the self-help uh, solution costs about like one to two dollars. Uh, so uh, I'll talk a little bit about the user experience. I was in, uh, I think, three weeks ago. I was in Denmark, and this particle uh, in the design uh, museum, uh, this sentence there. Uh, I'll just read it. It's things that are aesthetically pleasing, which we enjoy looking at or touching, and which are attractive, make us feel good. And when we feel good, our thinking is more creative, and we have an easier time solving the problems we face. How to use a particular object, for example, or a website, or your product, anything. 
And that means that why attractive, beautiful, appealing aesthetic objects work better because they evoke positive feelings and inspire more creative thinking. So you can see he here that if it, if it feels good, uh, our uh, thinking is more creative uh, in uh, you know, uh, solving the problems we face. So if we create nice user experience, we might get there. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the user-centered design. Uh, who knows what the UCD or user-centered design stands for? Okay, good. So user-centered design is kind of like a user interface design and a process where you address the needs, wants, and limitations of end users, and you put it in every, every stage of the design process. So you are looking at the, how the user is actually using your website, and as I said, what, what needs they have, what wants they have, what limitations they have. Um, by using that, you can, uh, you know, support uh, your actual goals. So you can increase the user friendliness. You can increase usability, uh, which will lead to, let's say, better sales or, you know, reach the business goals. Uh, you can use these user perspectives uh, during your research. One could be needs and wants, goals, motivation, and triggers, obstacles, and limitations, and so on. There are so many. I mean, the UCD is not something that you can just stick to or you want to stick to. Uh, there's whatever will apply for your user, use your common sense and, and use these. Uh, or think of which will apply to your users. So it could be geography and language is not uh, applicable to all of the users or all of the cases. Uh, user-centered design, even though it, it has it in its name that it's kind of focused on the user, it's not really something that you have to do everything that your user asks for. Uh, there is one motto from Tomáš Batia, which is a Czech, uh, Czech shoe uh, well, entrepreneur that is famous for his shoes. I, I think you have here his shops as well. And his motto was, our customer is our master. And I think it's not or I'm sure he didn't mean it like that uh, if the customer comes in and says, well, you just have to do these, uh, let's say, shoes in yellow or something like that. They would just take this as a suggestion and work with it and see what, uh, how it applies and, and things like that. They, they are not going to do it immediately, just like because there's one user that needs it. You always need to do some sort of research. Um, there's another example. Uh, from, well, a quote from Theodore Levitt, who was Harvard marketing professor, who said, people don't want to buy a quarter inch drill, they want to buy a quarter inch hole. Which means if you, for example, if you have a customer that comes in into the, uh, into the shop and he asks the salesman and he would say, um, I need a quarter inch drill. And uh, the salesman won't ask him any questions uh, and he just gives him the quarter inch drill. Then he will just walk away and he will have this drill. And you know, he probably because it was somewhere written that he needs a drill, he wouldn't know that what to do with that. But if the salesman will start asking him, what do you need a drill for? And, and all these kind of things, all these questions, doing his own really quick research, he will find out that he needs uh, actually to hang out his picture on the wall. So he needs a quarter inch hole. So it's not always that the user knows what they want. It always needs some research. Uh, so, within the UCD, you can use these disciplines. Uh, again, it, this is just uh, you know um, a brief list. You can extend it with your own techniques. So you use information architecture, interaction design, uh, visual design, research, usability, whatever comes to your mind when when it comes to your kind of processes. Uh, the process itself is that you first start your research. Uh, then you come to the concept, design, and then you evaluate your design, either by testing with the humans and uh, yeah, creating like low fidelity uh, wireframes and so on. Uh, I would add two more things to it, which is deploy, which is actually launching the project, and then uh, learning, which is quite a big uh, thing afterwards. Uh, I'd like to ask you a question. How many of you are actually following any analytics after you launch a project? Okay, good. That's quite a lot. I usually have like, let's say, three or four hands up. 
So basically, this is really good for you when you start actually learning, uh, learning new things because till now you did some testing, you did everything, and it's really uh, important for you to start actually looking what you did and how it's behaving, and then you can. If you are not working in e-commerce, let's say, it's not that uh, usual to actually look at the analytics afterwards. So uh, I'll show you a small example of uh, my research that I conducted. Um, and uh, it was in the Swiss bank, uh, which was like on a support portal. And the uh, support portal it was for like 100,000 uh, users, and it was internal project. It was actually running Drupal. And uh, I had a limited, uh, you know, limited uh, possibilities what I can do bec because nobody wanted me to do these things. So I did it kind of like under ra a radar. So I, I said to myself to start kind of like a micro approach where I will take just one simple things, the thing that I see on the site and just try to improve it and see what impact it will have. Uh, I only had access logs. Uh, and because I'm coming as well from the developer background, uh, uh, I knew what to do with that. Basically, access logs are just logs from the server where on each line there is like a, uh, this user visit, visited this page and that page and that page and blah, blah, blah. All kind of these logs. So I was able to find out, <coughs> I created these kind of uh, charts where you can see, let's say, the user flows. Uh, where the users came from, where they were going, where they were returning, and stuff like that. It, it looks a little bit complicated. There's this white stripe, uh, which shouldn't be there. But um, from there, it's as well interactive. So when you hover over one flow, it will highlight you which way it goes, and so on. Uh, and that was only based from the from the access log. Uh, so the search, uh, I chose the search, uh, that needs to search. Uh, and because the, the search itself is one of the most important functionality on the self-help portal where, where the users are actually searching for something, uh, for, for their problems, and they need to find their solutions. So I looked into this. Um, sometimes we kind of take it granted that something that uh, is there, or we take from, let's say, Drupal, or we install Drupal, and there's this search box, and it it's supposed to work because you think it's supposed to work because everyone has the same search box. And <coughs> so we tend to be kind of lazy to analyze these little things and pieces because other people have it the same way. Uh, so I looked at this search field that we had, which was this one. That's the original design by some designer. Uh, it was already in production. And we had... Uh, uh, or I, I set to myself some personal goals. Uh, first of all, I wanted to show the team that I was working with because they never did this kind of uh, user research. Um, and uh, I also wanted to show showcase the research approaches. And uh, the main goal was to make the search to be used more often so people were searching more. And also make the user-centered design as part of the one processes. And the output from this should be like analysis, how the search works, uh, delivered as a presentation for the, for the management, and sent to the members and managers. Uh, so the, the search analysis itself, uh, I wanted to increase the use of self-help so that people were searching stuff. And so it will actually decrease the race tickets. So they will always find what they need, need to find. They won't ultimately click, let's say, race a ticket, but they will try to search. And we assume that the search is not working because uh, we had some feedback actually from the real users that it's not working as it should be or they are not able to find what they want to find. Uh, I created a small kind of like a simple scenario, uh, which is like a user story, uh, where I put together what's the ideal simplified workflow when someone is searching. So they search, uh, they find a search field, they enter something, they search, they. They find some solutions, they search again until they are happy, and then they will leave happily, uh, and they will spread some you know, words about how much they love the portal and uh, how great user experience it was. So that, that was something that we were aiming for. Uh, so when I did the search analysis, uh, I found out that there are some keywords, the top keywords. So let's say there is some sort of like a blank keyword uh, 
Link, which is like another software for communicating from Microsoft and other keywords. So you can see there is some sort of like a blank keyword. It's not actually a blank keyword, but it's a word blank. And that already kind of triggered my you know, uh, curiosity why it's there blank. Uh, so the blank, uh, I won't bother you with some details here. Uh, so the blank keyword was kind of like a functionality of the portal where if you not enter anything in the search field, it will actually search for the blank keyword and it will give you filters there. It will show all the content and it will allow you to search, to filter out the content. Not a very smart way how to do these things, but yeah. So I found out that. And uh, I found out as well that from the home, uh, there were blank uh, keywords, uh, 1100 search, from search page, 510, from referrals, 110, and so on. And then it was uh, decreasing. Uh, which meant that on home there is a problem because if there are like 1100 uh, searches for the blank, it means that people were just going in and clicking the button search without entering anything. Uh, then from the search, uh, I found out that there's another problem because if they search the field for, or search for something, uh, there should be the field uh, filled in. So there was something filled in. Let's say I search for Microsoft. And I search the field again on the search page and it goes to the blank page. So I found a bug there. And refer, there was just another wrong link on the intranet which was pointing to this blank search keyword. So by uh, looking at this, I mean, okay, I was looking at the, where the, the blank page actually works or not and I found that it's, it's being used only 20 times out of let's say 10,000 times. And the conclusion was that it, it's not working really. And uh, what we did just achieve with this simple, small analysis is that we found three major issues with the search, which we wouldn't uh, find uh, if we weren't kind of analyzing these user flows. And basically the basic search user experience seems frustrating and it's time spent on the site while searching. And that's done, done only by this basic analysis. Uh, what was as well important during this research was that these were not assumptions anymore and it was really based on some metrics. And let's say before in this bank, everyone was just assuming this is uh, wrong because someone said it or that or that. So these are kind of not assumptions, but we have the metrics there, which we can work with afterwards. So uh, this is the original uh, search field or search box. Uh, now, the question was, uh, how do we make this more kind of used or more often used? And how we make users to make things type in? Uh, so it was quite simple because what, what we did is that we uh, first we uh, changed the search and find to something more like a prominent call to action, which is, do you need help? And this, this search box was actually on the home page, right, when you looked at it. And uh, we replaced the search assist uh, text for uh, ask a question or enter a search term here. And what was the effect of, of this one? There was, for example, one guy coming to me and he asked me, uh, it, must have you, uh, it must have taken you so much time to build a system that will understand users' questions. But in real, reality, if they type in like, how do I uh, set up my Outlook or something like that, before they were just using uh, the one keyword, uh, let's say just Outlook, and then they were searching. And so, so the only thing there was that we, we asked this question them, and they replied with the, with the question again. And it, what it only did is that they, uh, it made them to write more words, which meant for the search engine to make it more kind of useful and to find better, uh, better uh, solution for them. Because the solutions were written as well with the titles, how do I do something, or how can I, and, and so on. So this only this small uh, change, which is really just a textual change, there is nothing in the backend allow this, uh, this behavior. Uh, and then there is this b bigger search button, which allowed, uh, you know, which was more prominent for the users, so they were using it more. Uh, then measuring this is another, another important thing where you define your KPIs, which are the key performance. Uh, and uh, based on the goals, uh, 
like that I said before, whether the users are searching from HP from homepage more often and so on. Uh, I made these uh, charts, and here you can see uh, the the blue one is the the week before releasing this change, and the uh, red one is the week after, and the uh, orange one is two weeks after release. And you can see that it gradually improves. So people were actually starting or using the the homepage search more often. Uh, these are the blanks, uh, which didn't change much, so we can improve there a little bit. Probably people are still kind of confused with the uh, buttons and things, or they got used to clicking just the button to go to the search blank. And how to search is, uh, it quite improved, so this is when the users actually type in something like, how do I do stuff? So it improved a little bit as well. Uh, the comparison between uh, key single keywords and multiple keywords rose as well. So that was a success. Uh, these are all the, well, the two uh, search boxes and there, then there was like a follow-up where we again uh, made it a little bit more better. We, let's say, removed the autocomplete from the form because before there was like, if someone started typing, they would type in Outlook, it will show the autocomplete, they would just click it and then go to the search. Uh, we found out these things by uh, user testing sitting next to the user. Uh, so it's also important doing these things, not just going to the, through the access log or analytics. Uh, so this was kind of like the third option. Uh, now coming back to the self-help portal, so that, that was kind of like the better UX where you can improve really with little changes, little text, even textual changes, the user's behavior. Uh, coming to the self-help portals, uh, which is basically the knowledge base, um, the more the important keys are effective search and categorization. And as well, you have the web ticketing so people can submit the tickets through the portal and the support agents takes care of that. Uh, there was a study done that the 75% people uh, said that the self-service is a convenient way to address customer service uh, issues, and 67% people uh, said that they prefer self-service over speaking to a company representative. So if you, if you just do your countings with how, mu how much the uh, one ticket costs per call, and then the self-service, uh, how much it costs, you can, you can see that it would be really beneficial. Uh, then 91% of the people said that they will prefer using self-service and help themselves and not calling the, uh, the, the support center. So this is kind of like a really huge number of people. So, so people really like to help themselves first. I guess you, you probably know it from yourself as well that first you will try to search on Google yours, uh, your problem and then you are asking more somewhere. Uh, so self-help portals, you can try Zendesk, Desk, User Voice. These are like the three most common, which has, uh, these have like the uh, issue tracking agents and so on. You can also build your own with Drupal. Uh, there's like a support ticketing system uh, module and you will also need search and it's good to extend it with, let's, let's say, Apache Solar uh, to extend the search functionality. Um, now, when it comes to end-user manuals, uh, these were usually exported as PDF or HTML and handed over to the, to the user. And from our research, it, it showed up that they were never updated, they were never read, usually. Uh, users really uh, tend to you know, uh, hand over the workflows and everything just in between them. Uh, they weren't reading the, the manuals. And also all about these things uh, li uh, is leading to frustration of the author who wrote these uh, manuals, which, which is coming to this frustration uh, where nobody is doing it because they knew that nobody is going to read it and use it. Uh, just a note that the manuals are kind of really old uh, things that uh, they were here centuries ago. This is, for example, a manual from the uh, ancient times. Uh, so some facts about the documentation. Um, so documentation is hard to budget, I guess, uh, they have, like I explained before. It can't be easily reused as what I was uh, saying before. It is time consuming because, for example, when you are doing these screenshots, you have to do the screenshots again and again. Um, 
and it is boring, and yes, it is boring, and yes, it is boring. Um, and that's, how many of you think that documentation is boring? Raise your hand. Yeah. So, uh, you see, that's, that's how we right now see the documentation and kind of like the end user's manual, that this is like a boring thing that is hard to manage, hard to tame. But I, I actually kind of realized that when I go back to this first sentence that I was uh, showing before from this design museum, which is related to the uh, UX, and it says, when we feel good, our thinking is more creative and we have an easier time solving the problems we face. Now, when you think, what is the problem here? What, what does it mean, the problem, if we apply it to our uh, user, for example? Let's say you have e-commerce site and then the, user is, the user's problem is, again, that they need a um, uh, uh, three-quarter uh, inch drill. So this is their problems, which we are trying to solve that for them, so we will give them options and, and, you know, and things like that so they can easily go to that uh, specific drill or get them to know what they really know. And then what, what means feeling good uh, when, when there's this website that they are on, this e-commerce website? And it is actually feeling good means for them or from our point of view is that uh, the site is fast, so that's performance, that's something that developers do. Uh, from 10 people will like the performance as well. And and all these kind of things that makes the site and the impression of the site uh, you know, for the user feel good. And to that comes as well the documentation. So uh, where the user, let's say, asks themselves, how do I order this? Or how, where can I, you know, uh, how this shop works? That's documentation at the end. So basically the documentation should be, and uh, right now it's, it's really out of the processes that we have. So documentation is one of the processes in web development to make your client happy. So the user really uh, can find the information they have. We shouldn't forget about this, uh, about these things to make the documentation, to make these processes easier. Whatever we can't cover with, let's say, better user experience, we can cover with some other tools. Uh, so takeaways from, from these uh, researches. Um, if you haven't done so, start your research now. Uh, even this micro thing, whatever you see you spot on your site, you think you can improve it or you think it's not working from your previous experiences, uh, start now, start examining it. Uh, learn from your own work after you launch. So that's something that we covered before. Uh, analyze, don't assume too often if you, if you don't have real experiences in that. And most importantly, think about users, but keep business needs in mind. So even if it's user-centered design, keep the business needs in mind. Or otherwise, you might uh, make your clients happy, but you will be without business. Uh, for the self-help, uh, the users want self-service. Uh, they will use it before they will ask someone else. And providing a help is part of our process and should be part of our process. And uh, there is also one how we are doing with the time. Okay, we have 10 minutes. So there's also one uh, solution uh, that we, uh, that uh, kind of came from these problems that we came up with, and it's called the inline manual, which I will show you in just 10 minutes. How does it work and so on. So uh, I have here a little demo. This is uh, integration for the Drupal. And, okay, let me just log out. Okay, so basically what, what the end user sees is this little widget here down there. Uh, they see a list of the help. It's kind of like an inline help. Uh, so there's like a welcome to Drupal demo. They can click on that and they are navigated through the whole system or through the website by using these tooltips. And I think uh, you can find this like, let's say on Facebook when there's like a new feature or so. So what, I can, what the end user can do here, they can click next, read the instructions, go next, go next. Uh, we can as well highlight things. So here is, let's say, okay, well, create new account. So you can click that, or the end user can click that. It right now redirected the user to the user register page. So they are on a different page. They are asked to fill in the username. 
and then, then they can continue email address they type in they type in email address and continue they can click newsletter and create new account and finish the whole process with creating a new account so uh, this is kind of uh, how it works for the end user it's always handy you, they always see it here and uh, it's within the application within within the browser so it's always when when you are creating a content or so they can learn what to fill in uh, just just briefly there's this uh, it's all built uh, we have here like a portal which is if you know git it's kind of like a git central repository uh, where all these kind of changes you create all these documentation you create uh, you uh, have here in this portal and uh, for example if I look here on a site which was this Drupal demo I can see the topics we call these topics but essentially these are the tutorial tutorials here so these are the, the ones that will be displayed for the end user that I have created um, what's interesting about this as well that we have this kind of approach of private and public uh, tutorials so for example if there is a tutorial for Drupal how to create a user someone creates that uh, you can then you know create a site of your own take this public tutorial put it on your site and you have documentation for your end user now uh, the other parts that we have here is for example that you can test uh, your uh, tutorial so for example when you have production site you create a release uh, you can run these tests and it will check whether it still applies whether you have all the same elements and if it works actually so you don't have to do it manually and what we have as a new feature right now actually released today is a uh, uh, HTML documentation so we can actually export this to HTML and it also creates the screenshots for you so you end up with a uh, something like a document that you can style afterwards uh, like this so it's like a HTML and here you can see the screenshots of the elements and this documentation you can then uh, do whatever you want with that uh, style it or yeah so you have this option as well um, so yeah, if, you, if you are interested into this uh, it's quite easy to implement for Drupal as well it uh, so far our research shows that it helps users uh, it makes it much more pleasant for them to, to use the site it's as well easier for developers to, to make this uh, make this documentation so if you want to have a chat about this I'm, I'm free to chat uh, and I think I will wrap it now yes okay so I'm done thank you if you have any questions about user-centered design or this yes uh, not the back end no for sure any other questions but actually the player will be uh, open sourced Yes. Yes. Any site, anything, anything that runs uh, runs within browser. We have like uh, we have PHP libraries, Rails uh, libraries. Uh, you can just export uh, the the site content, the site tutorials, which will be like minify JavaScript, minify CSS, and put it into your site, and you have it. It doesn't matter. For Drupal what? Uh, yes, you can. Yeah, definitely. Yes, you can. I mean, it's it's up to you where you will use it, but it's still Drupal, so we can install the Drupal module there is for this, and it's kind of like a connector between our portal and Drupal, so it will fetch all the tutorials to your site, and the tutorials are actually on your site, on your server. Any other questions? Yes? Um, right. Uh, so the question was, how do you uh, how do you make your designer think about more, th more think more about the uh, usability and user research, right? Yeah. How to how to redesign things. 
I would say it's, uh, well, convincing designer, I would say the designers should have some sort of like a feeling for that already, so. <laughs> but I would say, uh, again, analytics. I mean, you can say that, let's say, the search is not performing very well, if it will be regarding the search. And you would just say, well, look, the search is not working as it should be. Uh, can we do about this something? Uh, if your designer is not that guy who will be looking for other approaches, you will have to find, for, uh, you know, look for some examples of different searches. Uh, there are a lot of use case studies for almost everything, you know, out there. So you give him just, let's say, from Smashing Magazine, top 20 solutions for search, and he can take some inspiration and maybe do something about that. Right. Any other questions? No? Okay, so I think we can wrap it up. If you feel like, uh, yeah, feel free to chat with me. I will be around and at a party as well. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you mean like an image? Um, right. So the question is whether it can be used for any content. Uh, content. Uh, yes, it can, as long as it has this HTML structure. So it needs to be HTML, and then it can work on that. Yes, exactly. So if it's an HTML, it will work for sure. Yeah. Okay. Good. So thanks a lot, and see you around. <laughs>